All right, everybody, here we go with another rookie mistake. I know it's been a little bit, but honestly, the weather's been a bit gloomy here in LA, and I don't do well with gloomy weather. My mood seems to mirror whatever the weather's like. I think this is supposed to be our last spell of rain, so expect more videos. Before I get into it, I want to plug the Patreon again. Thank all of you guys who have subscribed. I actually just did a video lesson with Antoine Chisholm today. He's made a lot of progress since our last lesson last month. And if you're interested in doing those video lessons with me, consider signing up at the $25 a month mark. You are able to get a once a month video lesson with me. And I have seen progress with people who've signed up for that. I also got a comment recently from a viewer. And thank you for watching the videos, man. But I just wanted to address this real quick. So he says that he prefers the videos of me out in the field doing the tricks over the videos of me at home. And thank you for watching the videos in general. I just wanted to respond this way because I hate typing to be honest and I'd rather speak my mind. It's more effective and more efficient. Uh, you are in the minority, man. The majority of the videos about tricks that have me out in the field they're not performing as well as these rookie mistakes type videos. And if you look a little bit harder, I'm always giving examples of what I mean in these videos. And since I'm pulling other video into these, I'm able to slow those down and accentuate the areas of motion. As opposed to me having to coordinate with someone to film, hoping that that cameraman knows which part is necessary to film while I'm demonstrating the trick, or worse, which ended up happening most of the time recently, me out in the field trying to film myself and take all of the little nuances into consideration. This is the most effective way for me to make these videos. It's the least time consuming way for me to make these videos. I am making and editing them myself. And yeah, I'm making these videos for a reason. One, I have information that seems to be valuable to a lot of people and I want to share that information, but I have to support myself. And so I have to make the videos that people are going to watch. And for the meantime, I'm going to be making a lot of these rookie mistakes type videos because it seems like these are helping people. I get tons of great feedback from people who say that implementing one, a couple or all of these rookie mistakes into their skating has helped them make progress where they were stalling before. Now, I'd like to get into today's rookie mistake, which is, you know, a lot of you guys are not using your arms when you skate. What do I mean when I say using your arms when you skate? Well, it's slightly different from the other rookie mistake about not using your shoulders, right? This means using your arms in two different ways. And the first is the most simple to break down, right? And that is using your arms to balance. So if you've ever watched a high wire walker, like not just the tightrope walker that's balancing on ropes that are low to the ground, but the people that walk across those wires that are way high up there, crazy stuff that I would never even dream of attempting, right? They tend to be holding onto a bar, right? And that bar is adding length to their wingspan, right? Or width to their wingspan, I guess I should say. So that means they have a lot more distance to work with to help them balance, right? And if you think about skateboarding, we're no different, right? Once you stand onto your skateboard, you're changing the orientation of the way that you're standing, right? You're now standing sideways as, a, as opposed to an open stance. And that gives you a smaller point to balance on compared to when you're walking, when you're moving forward with both of your legs pointed outward and you're walking about shoulder width apart. Now we have about eight and a half, maybe nine inches of width to balance on at the most. So we need to use our arms to assist with us balancing, right? And a lot of you guys are just not doing it. I notice this a lot of the times with my students and I will use that example of a high, high, high wire walker and I will use that against the example of a bowling pin. And why is a bowling pin a good example? It's because bowling pins are designed for one thing, to be knocked over. And bowling pins happen to resemble the human form when our arms are down by our side. So we want to be more like the high wire walker than the bowling pin, 
if that makes sense to you guys. I hope that it does, and you should give this a try when you're out skating. Now the second part of this rookie mistake is not using your arms when you're attempting your tricks. And the skaters that I can use as examples are Paul Rodriguez, who is the perfect example of how to do this, and Antoine Dixon, who to a lot of you guys seems like a counter example. The reality is Antoine's sleepy style, where he doesn't lift his arms, that's actually a bit of a misnomer, right? That's not a bit of a misunderstanding of the way that he's skating. Antoine does lift his arms. The difference is he doesn't keep his arms up very long. They tend to go back down close to his sides after he lifts them up pretty quickly. And there are a few reasons for this. One, that's his style, right? He's got a sleepy style. It's awesome. I've known Antoine since way before he had the Baker three part even. I think before he even skated for Young Guns, which was Alex Trainwreck Gall, one of my favorite skaters from back in the day. In Bloom part was, ah, uh, it was his skate company. It only existed for a matter of months. And that was Antoine's first sponsor. I met him before that at Belmont High School. He nollie heel flipped the nine stair. He had almost the patented Antoine style already then. He kept his arms up a little bit longer back then, but as he grew and as he became more comfortable with skating, he was able to lift his arms briefly and drop them back down to his side. And that created the style that everyone remembers and so many imitated. And now notice that I said as he grew older and got more comfortable because Antoine learned to skate just like everybody else. He learned to skate clawing, trying to put together tricks, trying his hardest to learn how to do tricks. And then over time, he became comfortable by skating a lot and by learning which tricks he liked to do. And if you notice about Antoine, he does his tricks. He does them very well. And this is why he's able to have that type of style because these are tricks that he has repped out tens of thousands of times. So he doesn't need anything to assist with his balance when he's doing these tricks. He also doesn't tend to do tricks that require him to slide or grind very long. There are examples of him doing pretty long slides, but that's not the common way that he skates. And so he's not having to worry about his balance so much when he's jumping down those steps. He's worried about the initial explosion, the pop, the catch, and then staying still. So him not having his arms up the whole time, not rolling down the rolling up and rolling down the windows, as some people would call it, it's not gonna make that big of an impact on his skating. You guys can't skate like Antoine in the beginning. If you're a beginner and you're trying to imitate someone else's style, I would advise you to focus on learning your tricks, getting a bag of tricks that you're comfortable with, and then learning to have a style because contrary to popular belief, Nobody's style is natural. Everybody's style is to some degree forced. It's an amalgamation of skaters that you've seen, skaters that you respect, skaters who you've skated with. All of that comes together to create your style and you are intentionally moving this way because in your mind, this is what you think of as good style. We all do this and it's something that we do maybe subconsciously, partially, it partially it's conscious. Now the other skater I'm gonna use as an example is another skater that I've skated with, Paul Rodriguez. Paul Rodriguez taught me how to do a proper tray flip and I'm forever in his debt for it because I do that trick all the time still to this day. Now the difference between these two skaters is that Paul Rodriguez uses his arms quite a bit. He has a very precise and technical style and he does tricks that require a lot of attention and if you've noticed P-Rod skating, he starts with his arms up to here. As he's crouching, he will drop his arms, which is what I do, and he'll actually cross his arms in front of him at his lowest point of squat. And then as he explodes to come up, he'll throw his arms up first. And this is the proper way to explode for a trick. It mimics the way that you run. If any of you have run track like I did briefly in high school, you would have learned to run properly, and you'll know that your arms have to be moving properly just as your legs and they move in tandem. Well, it's exactly the same with skateboarding. Your arms, your legs, and the rest of your body move in tandem. You should be crouching. You don't have to cross your hands like P-Rod. I've noticed that when I do certain tricks like a gnarly nose slide or a gnarly crooked grind, tricks that I saw P-Rod do a lot when I was learning them, I actually do cross my hands, not to the degree that he does, but 
I will cross my hands just a bit. And this just comes, like I said, from watching him skate and learning the tricks while I was watching him skate. That's a part of his skating that's forever burned into my memory. I also stick my front foot out to catch my tray flips, which is something that I learned from him. These are the things that make up the way that I skate, things that I have acquired over time. So I want all of you guys to go out and I want you to start being conscious of when you're pushing and when you're balancing, when you're rolling around, are your arms down by your side? Because if they are, you should lift them up. You don't have to have them all the way up here when you're just balancing. Although if you're an absolute beginner, just learning how to push, just learning how to tic-tac, I would recommend you keeping your arms up because we have to force these motions so that they become natural to us. And then we can kind of break with those forced motions once we develop some muscle memory, once our muscles become used to firing in the way that's necessary to control and stabilize our skateboard. And then I also want you guys who are trying ollies and things like that to start paying attention. As you start the ollie, as you start the kickflip, whichever trick it is, are you lifting up your arms and then dropping them as you crouch? And once you get to the lowest point, throwing your arms up as you explode to pop. This will help your skating, I promise, if you implement it. Might feel a little bit clunky at first because a lot of the motions that we have to use to skate are not motions that come naturally to us. That's why I will say until I die that style is not natural. Everyone's style is something that they are committing to. And it's an amalgamation of skaters that we've seen, skaters we admire, skaters that we've skated with. And that's how we create a style. But you should only be worrying about creating a style if you've been skating long enough to have a bag of tricks that you do comfortably. And you should start practicing that style with the tricks that you're most comfortable with. Because with tricks that you're just learning, right, it's gonna impede your ability to get these tricks into your toolbox and to have them consistently. So focus on doing your tricks consistently. Use those two different methods of balancing with your arms and using your arms for proper pop. This is a very common rookie mistake that I people see people making, not using their arms. Try it today and I hope it helps your skating if you're in a place where you can skate. Thank you for watching. Uh, consider signing up for the Patreon. Consider getting a deck from www.collageskateboards.com. And thank you guys for watching. Enjoy skateboarding.